All right, welcome. We're back again with another exciting interview, and we're here today with the wonderful Darty Hines. Hey, Darty. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Darty is an amazing photographer and social media expert, and he just he just knows so much information. We're really excited to have him on and talk a little bit more about his expertise. Um, but let me share with everyone here a little bit about Darty for those who doesn't don't know who he is. So um, a husband, a father to three amazing girls, a photographer, a social media fanatic, and owner of Sync, Darty Hines, PPA craftsman, keeps very busy. Even with his busy schedule, he is constantly striving to find new and innovative ways for small business owners to succeed. He has been a professional photographer for over 20 years and has worked and consulted with many prestigious photography studios across the nation. Darty and his wife, Michelle, are also the co-owners of the educational conference Sync, yeah, he's saying. <laughs> um, they met during college at Ohio Institute of Photography in Dayton, Ohio, where the chemistry was not just in the dark room. They married a few years later after college graduation, had three beautiful daughters, and currently reside in Millersburg, Pennsylvania. Darty's street start smart marketing and social media knowledge continues to help photographers and small business owners across the country. So awesome. Welcome. <laughs> hey, glad to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thanks for being here. So why don't we just start off, Jari, by you telling us a little bit about you, your photography business, um, all your experiences, and um, maybe just something about your business that not that many people know about. Sure. Um, you know, I guess the love for photography will start at the beginning came from, you know, back in the high school days, a yearbook photographer. Um, I always like joke and laugh. I say I was the yearbook photographer, so I got invited to all the cool parties. <laughs> right, right, right. We so, you know, that was you know, kind of where it started. That's where I first picked up the camera. Um, from there, like the bio said, I went to Ohio Institute of Photography, um, you know, which is a really good school. It was a, back then, that was like the photography school around and really provided me with a great foundation. So I really appreciate that because you know, I had some really awesome instructors. Some of them are still professional photographers today. You know, so, you know, working studios. So that's really cool that, you know, that foundation was laid right away. Um, and then from there, I went to a really small studio up in New Philadelphia, Ohio. Um, and that photographer was very like old masters with a traditional background. And I really learned how to, you know, I kind of learned the art of posing, um, you know, even just like a headshot, because, you know, sometimes it starts with a headshot. You know, if you don't know how to do that, you're going to be in trouble when you go to full length. <laughs> you, know, so, right. you know, so it really kind of started. He did a lot of very just kind of traditional old master backgrounds look. Um, and then uh, my wife and I decided that we were going to move a little closer to home for, for her home, which was Cincinnati. Um, and so I got a job down there at a studio that did a lot of volume. Uh, so that was a big change because, you know, went from a studio that did, did, did very few volume to a lot of volume. Um, and learn, you know, kind of learn that volume aspect of things at that studio. And then after I jumped around a lot, <laughs> that studio, um, I went to uh, Central Ohio and worked with Larry Peters, which a lot of people know, yeah. um, stayed there for like two and a half, three years. And of course, that was a fantastic learning experience. I can imagine. Well. Um, you know, one of the masters of senior photography. And, you know, if you're, if you're new in the industry, and you are doing senior portraits, you kind of owe that to Larry Peters, you know, so Google him, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know, kind of look up what he's doing. Um, really, you know, that was obviously an amazing experience. And then from there, moved out here to Pennsylvania um, and worked at a studio for 17 years. Um, and and at, in between all that, you know, once I got out here, you know, things started happening with sync. Um, and so, you know, it got to the point where Really, you know, full-time photographer and full-time at Sync was not really balancing too well. Um, so, you know, most recently, what probably people, a lot of people don't know is I'm full-time Sync and part-time photographer. So I kind of made that switch where it was full-time photographer, part-time Sync. Um, right. So, we flipped it, you know, we flipped it around just because Sync has become, you know, that large for us and has grown that much. So, um, so now, you know, after all the years of being a studio photographer, I'm doing mostly location, which is... A, kind of cool in a way um you know my my girls were like looking at a session i did not too long ago and they're like dad this is you know you're like really doing things that are different and i'm like yeah because now it's a challenge because where i went in before and it was like a lot of sets and lights were set up for me and i could just pull background down and be done now i'm like gonna okay i gotta think about things and i kind of felt my creativity was kind of coming back a little bit by you know being forced to find things on location which is kind of cool 
That's awesome. Yeah. So you have a story. Normally we hear these stories when we have like military families that uh, move, <laughs> move around so much. Um, yeah. And I moved around even as a child a lot too, because my dad was a pastor. So, I mean, I've, I've lived in a lot of places over my years. <laughs> And definitely with Larry Peterson, like all the, all the experiences you had, just so diverse. So, you know, it definitely, you know, as a photographer, you know, I think a lot of us, we might learn off of one mentor and like, that's our reality. And like, we have the blinders on and there's like one methodology or one way. Um, so you had like, you know, you're on those old masters originally and fine tuning like the art of like the, the, the subtlety of, of detail and then going to high volume, which more is like a logistical thing, right. um, you know, and efficiencies. Uh, so having both of those extremes and, and also, you know, having those great opportunities with Larry and every, I, it must make you an incredible, like, well-rounded well photographer that you, that you don't hear of too much these days because people pick up a digital camera and they just, they just shoot off in one direction and depending on what classes they land online or at a conference, like, that's the reality. Right, exactly. Yeah, I had a lot of different foundations coming in as a young photographer. So I'm very happy I and mean, very blessed about that. And, you know, just a lot of really great mentors through my life, for sure. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And I think the key there, though, you said mentors. I think that's really important. <laughs> more than one. <laughs> yeah, more than, oh, yeah, more than absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah, don't ever put you one, don't ever focus just on one person because, man, you can learn a lot from everybody. So that's true. That's true. Absolutely. So, through all your experiences, can you share with us one of the challenges you've had to overcome? Um, yeah, I think probably, you know, I, I kind of, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think, um, a challenge that I've had through my career is I've always been kind of, I don't want this to sound bad, but I was always an employee and not like an, a business owner. So one of the challenges recently for us is when I decided to go full-time sync was now I'm a business owner, you know, hundred percent, you know, with me and my wife. And it's like, for all those years, you know, you're an employee and you just kind of have to show up and the boss tells you what to do and you can leave at the end of the day and not have to worry about work, you know, and, and so, you know, and that's kind of dumbing it down a little bit, you know, but, you know, you don't have to worry about work anymore. You can go home and spend time with your family. Now the challenge is, okay, this is your business and you've got to make this work. And if you don't make it work, you're not going to eat this week, you know, <laughs> or you're not going to be able to pay the bills, you know, so it's a, that was a complete turnaround with us in probably the last, you know, three or four years where we had to just completely refocus, you know, and really say, you know what, as a business owner, now our responsibilities are a little bit different than when they were when you were an employee. So I think that's probably over the last, you know, two or three years, that's probably been my biggest, my newest challenge, let's just say that, my newest challenge. Yeah, so going, going from that employee mentality to the entrepreneur, the self-employed, it's a huge mental shift. Absolutely, and the cool thing about it is too, like when I talk to people, um, you know, other photographers who might be struggling with something, especially if they are an employee of a business, then I can relate with them a little bit more. Yeah. So I feel like I do kind of have that empathy, um, you know, to say, you know what, I've been there, I understand what you're going through, you know, and here's some advice on how you can maybe go talk to your boss or go talk to the leader of your industry or leader of your business or whatever. Um, you know, just kind of, I, I feel like I kind of have a balance on both ends of that now. So I think that kind of helps when you're talking to people that are in the business and are, are struggling with their workplace or something like that. Yeah. I think, I think we see that more common these days because the point of entry years ago was you really need to know photography and a skill set before you jumped into it professionally. And, and because of technology, you know, and everybody's going to have an opinion about it that was good or bad for our industry, but it's something that I think it's more natural that there's people that naturally transition where they probably just got a camera as a gift. They have their full-time job. Maybe they're an accountant or, they work at a local store or something. They start photographing like their their kids' uh, soccer team or something like that. Yeah. And then somebody's next to them is like, "Wow, that's a really great image. Can I can I get one of those?" Uh, and then you know, two months later, like, "Hey, can you take photos of our family?" And so they're almost like accidental entrepreneurs. Um, right. So I think we're seeing more and more, you know, that trend. It's becoming more the norm. I think is people on that threshold, like you said, like going between dual careers. Um, you know, looking into the photography world, it's very alluring. Mm. Do, do you have any advice for somebody that's in that transition? I know you say you give advice, but do you, do you have any, like, maybe like a quick tip for somebody that's like, yeah, you know, yeah I, I feel like, um, yeah, like you were saying, I think some people kind of fall into photography and I'm not saying don't be a photographer, but make sure that's really what you want to do. You know, mm -hmm. I think sometimes you go, a lot of people go, well, you know what, this is just easy. So I'm just going to do it. Whether, what, whatever that, you know, career is. 
Right. And right. I just found a long time ago, you know, maybe about four or five years ago, kind of went through a, you know, a life change for myself, you know, and I was just like, you know what, you got to do what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, you know, maybe, maybe you might have to not go out to eat, you know, a certain night of the week or something <laughs> like that. You might cut back on your Starbucks or whatever it is. Um, but you want to, <laughs> why you, that's me. That's me. <laughs> but you, know, you want to do it, you know, what makes you happy, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, what I've been saying to photographers, if they're really struggling, I'm like, is this really what you want to do? I mean, it is, you know, did you just do this by accident? Like you said, you know, back in, if we go back to like, you know, when the economy was really bad in 2008, nine, mm-hmm. a lot of people picked up the camera because they didn't have a choice, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that, you know, you do have choices now because things have improved, the economy is better, there's more jobs, you know, you know, just because you've been doing it for a couple of years, if you're struggling and it's not really for you, go do what is for you, go do what really makes you happy, you know, and figure out a way to, to make a career out of that, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm a strong believer in that. That's what we've been doing um, with Sync was, you know, it, that is something we absolutely love. You know, and I, and I feel like it's our, you know, kind of our calling, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so, you know, it makes us super happy. And, you know, and, and yeah, we're not, you know, maybe not pulling in the money that we used to pull in with a full-time photography career job, but mm-hmm. it's, you know, something that we love doing. And I think that's a little bit more important these days than, you know, than suffering through something you hate. True. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. So I know you have so much marketing information advice and to get one piece of marketing advice is to narrow it down. But if you could give a, a marketing advice for uh, photographers, what would that be? Um, right now, I think we're going to, well, I'll just kind of put it on social media because mm-hmm. that's where everybody is. Yeah. I think that Instagram story is where it's at right now. Um, there are, are, I just read an article that there's 250 million daily in- Instagram story users which is incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that number actually has now surpassed Snapchat, which, you know, if, if you remember when Instagram stories came out about a year and a half ago, everybody was just like, oh, they're copying Snapchat. We all made fun of it. And nobody, everybody was like, it's never going to last. And everybody, not everybody, but I would say the majority of marketers are moving into that Instagram stories um, format. Mm-hmm. And it's really hot right now. And that's the place to be. Um, and it just did some really cool things with it where, um, when you're doing a story, you can al- you can actually save the story, and it's called a highlight, and it'll show up right on your profile. So you can actually, um, if you, let's just say that you're photographing a high school senior, and you know you're doing an Instagram story of this of the session, like a lot of people do, and it just you know it's one of those times when everything just works out perfectly. You know, it's like the perfect session. You know, you can actually save that, and you can put it on your profile on your Instagram page, and it, you can actually call it like you know, whatever, um, a guy's photo session sample or a girl's photo session sample. So that way, as a new, as a client's coming to your Instagram account, if they, they can click on that and they can see that, you know, so if I was out shooting an Instagram story and it was like, I'm just one of those perfect days, I would definitely save that as an sample um, as far as like what my work is. So there's a lot of really cool things happening um, with Instagram stories right now. And, and there, it seems like, and Instagram's owned by Facebook. <laughs> oh, yeah. It seems like that Instagram's kind of got its own like people behind it that are doing things that are a little bit better than what Facebook are doing. So um, I just really, I think that's where a lot of uh, millennials are right now. So, you know, and, and millennials, a lot of people, when they think of millennials, they think of high school kids. That's not actually true. You know, at this point, you know, millennials are, are young moms now. Um, some of them have like toddlers that might be playing t-ball or, you know, or if you're a child to tire for, you know, so there's definitely the, that millennial market is actually on Instagram stories really a lot. Um, so we want to make sure that we're hitting that. So we're, we're connecting with those customers for sure. And in, in that format, you know, and right now that's probably my favorite marketing go-to for, for, um, for photographers is Instagram stories. I think that's where it's at. Nice. Great. It, that's what I love about catching up to see where you're, you, cause you have the, the ear to the ground because when I saw you live at Maryland PPA um, over a year ago in that moment, in a, that moment of time, it was geo filters on Snapchat, like was the thing that you were talking about and that you're so aware of the shifts of what's happening. Right. That you've even now you're shifting in, in more like, hey, we were over here before, but this is not trending. Like this is now what's relevant. Oh yeah. So, so yeah, as you said, trending's the trending's a perfect word because social media, you know, is always changing and always evolving. Mm-hmm. And if you're not on board, you're gonna be left behind. I was just speaking at Imaging USA and 
you know, that was kind of my message that, you know, there's that I knew there was people in the audience that are just like, you know what, I just don't think social media is for you. And I, my message to them was you better get on board because if you're not, your, comp your competition is, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so you don't really have a choice. You know, you got to do something, pick one. You don't have to pick them all. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of times people go, I got to do everything. No, you just have to pick, pick one that you do really good at, you know, or two that you do really good at. You don't have to do them all. Just, you know, just, but make sure you're there someplace. Yeah. For right. someone that's overwhelmed with social media, what would you tell them how to kind of get over that? Um, I would say, yeah, uh, somebody that's overwhelmed with social media, my guess is their demographic is going to be that they're a little bit older, um, mm -hmm. you know, as far as, you know, uh, older in age. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you're older in age and you feel like you're a little overwhelmed with social media, then I would say find somebody younger that can help you out. Yeah. I mean, it's super easy. A great example of that is my daughter went and saw her grandparents and they were like, Sam, show me what to do on this phone. I can't figure out how to do this and I can't figure out how to do that. And she just jumped right in and, and really kind of made it easy for them, you know, and they were like, oh, thanks, you know, so then they got it, you know. <laughs> but, so, you know, it's kind of a similar situation. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, find somebody that can help you out with that, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of people t say like, well, who do I, who do I get? Well, I think, you know, for me, if I have, you know, if I'm in a high school senior business, I kind of feel like, you know, like, oh, this one high school senior girl or guy that's really active and everybody likes and is very, you know, has a, a great cool presence in, in the community, you know, but if you're going to have somebody help you with your social media, the first thing I would do is go look at their social media. Gotcha. So <laughs> you're still representing your brand, especially if you're going to, you know, sometimes I've been saying lately that if you don't want to do it, like if you don't want to be the face of the camera because some people are afraid of that too. They don't want to, you know, because you do Facebook lives or you're doing these um, Instagram stories and, you know, mm -hmm. all these behind the scenes things. If you don't want to be the face of the camera, then find somebody that can be the face for you, but yeah. make sure they're representing your brand because sure. this is all part of it. You know, this is all part of your brand. So if you don't have somebody representing you correctly or, or, or if they're on social media, on their own personal social media and they're saying things that are, are not great, Right. right back to you so you just gotta be really super careful yeah, yeah. i think that's so key because you see these multi-billion dollar brands where it negatively impacts them when they have a celebrity that ends up you know instantly and we've seen a lot of that this past year mm -hmm. sure. um so you definitely need to be very very careful on that so that, yeah absolutely even just you personally i mean my one of my messages the imaging was um, that when you're posting you know you are also a part of your brand so you know it's the world's angry enough. <laughs> right. I think that we, you know, one of the things that my, one of my ending slides was we can post in love, you know? So, so when you get ready to post something, just that, you know, am I uplifting somebody today or am I tearing down somebody today? And if you're tearing down somebody today, then just type it out on a word document. So you get it out of your system and then delete it. You know, don't put it out on social media for everybody. Yeah. yeah we, we have a face-to-face a, a -face acid test. So it's like, if I wouldn't go to you in person and say to you face-to-face, then I'm not going to post it on social media. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. and that, that's just a, that's a general thumb on our end. <laughs> and you know, all those hot topics when it comes to our business, we're, we'll photograph your family no matter what your belief is in blank. You know, as long as it's not illegal or immoral. Right. You know, it's like we're, we're okay. We're okay. So we 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 ourselves we're very in tune with that. We're like we you would never know any of our opinions on 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 certain topics because that's what that's what our parents told us. You know, when we were younger, they would talk about these topics <laughs> somewhere that disappeared. That. Yeah, you'll never you'll never see me doing like anything controversial, political. Yeah, yeah. That, that's never on Facebook for me. You know, because it's. I want my Facebook to represent our brand. So. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. So you've already given so much advice, but for someone new starting out, what would be something that you would tell them um, in a best advice for them, best practice? Best advice for somebody new, uh, well, obviously because I believe in education and live education, you know, my first advice would be get to an educational event of some sort. Mm -hmm. Now there are a slew of options. You know, we all know that there's online, there's in-person, there's a lot of different options. Um, I think what you gotta do is do a little bit of research. You gotta do a little research for the in-person version, you know, because, you know, if you're going to, you know, let's just use Texas School of Photography for an example. If you're going there, look at the instructors, instructors that are there. Is there something that you feel like you really are weak in that you can spend an entire week with them and really kind of dive into that to improve that part of your, of your business? Um, if you're doing online or if you're doing a mentorship, 
Have you went and looked at who these people are? What kind of business do they have? Are they actually shooting sessions? You know, there's a lot of people right now that they're not shooting anything. They're just selling to photographers and you know, that's not going to do you any good. Um, you know, I try, sometimes we miss the mark. I understand that, but I try as much as possible that when we're doing presentations at sync that we've done a little bit of research and these are people that are hardworking, they've got their studios, they're actually shooting sessions, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the people that you really want to learn from. Um, you know, and that's the people that I want to learn from as well. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm all about education, but before you go and spend that hard earned money and invest in something, make sure that you're researching who's going to be at that event or who you're looking at online, you know, because unfortunately there's a lot of false information out there, you mm -hmm. know, and it's, and it's easy, you know, and, and photography is a hot market right now. So it's easy to sell to them, yeah. you know, so <laughs> we want to make sure that, you know, the people that we are listening to are, are people that are hardworking and are actually in the trenches because mm -hmm. that's the people I want to learn from. Yeah. Absolutely. I have to say um, on, on our end, you know, with, with Sync, when we were there last year, the, cause we've been to a lot of big, big, huge conferences. And the one thing that we really enjoyed is, you know, you, we talk online to a lot of people, right? So like, even, even like us, like, you know, we, you would see each other in groups and things like that. But then when you actually have an intimate enough, like it's big enough where it serves and it covers all the topic and, and it's a great, incredible experience, but it also is small enough where, everybody has a chance to get out of their bubbles a little bit. Cause I think a lot of us are introverts and we don't, you know, we hide behind a camera a lot and the ego is really out the door. And like you were immersed there, like the number of speakers you have there to attendees, it's like you're actually immersed in hanging out. And like, it's not like you have to go to the bar to hang out with them. It's like right there, you actually create a lounge and everything right in the center of the hub. And it was just really great that just the integration that everybody's there to help each other out. Because mm -hmm. I always, for me, in, in conferences in general, in any industry, I always found like the, it's always the in between the classes. It's the peer to peer. It's the camaraderie. It's the fellowship. It's, you know, the creating bonds and relationships. Because what's interesting is once you leave like Sync as an example, there's people that you did talk to online before. Now they actually, instead of putting like one phrase to help you out on a post you're struggling with online, now they actually like direct you and say hey Paul what's going on let me help you out man you know right. now you actually continue that face-to-face -face relationship and I think it solidifies it uh, even more so the, the training I think is even even though the, the courses and the classes are incredible I think it you know it's the connections that are made even ex extent outside of that uh, as well Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. all true <laughs> all true <laughs> so I have a fun question for you if you were to relocate to a new area and no one knew who you were and um, you had $1,000 in your business bank account what would you do to market your business um, well if I was moving to a new area I would probably spend some of that money on Facebook ads and target just that particular community you know, it's super easy to do in Facebook. Um, you can get in there and you can dive. There's so many set, set, um, settings and the ads, um, you know, where you can target it right down to the exact city that you're in, you know, and I would, you know, and one of the things you got to be careful with with Facebook ads is that you don't want to um, just make it come across as that you're just trying to self promote or, or sell something. So I would create some sort of ad that, you know, I, I, what I've been studying lately is that the most, most successful ads on Facebook that you're the paid ads is the fact that you start with a question that ends with a yes. So you ask a question that everybody says yes to, you know, and then you follow that up with an answer and then a call to action. So if you can follow those three tips on doing an ad, I would do that. And I would target it directly to the community that I'm in. Um, you know, that would be one thing. And if, if there's a, the other thing, you know, Paul mentioned Snapchat earlier. Um, the other thing I would do is if like, you know, our area and town has like a, a May festival, you know, so I would do a geo filter for the May festival. And then I would make, you know, pay, you know, it might cost you a hundred bucks to, to mark off the little, the town where your festival is. And then make sure the next part would be to make sure that people know that that filters there, you know, because the generation C, the connected generation, they're loving the geo filters on Snapchat. So, you know, they're gonna, if they can swipe right and then they can see your geo filter on there, you know, and now this becomes part of your brand. And a lot of people say, yeah, but I'm not on Snapchat or my clients aren't on Snapchat. That's okay. You still wanna do that because what happens is the young generation, if they get a really cool picture with your geo filter on it, 
they'll screenshot it and then they'll save it over to a different platform. So they might put it on Instagram or they might, or even a mom might put it on Facebook, you know, cause you know how moms are. They're like, Oh, let me see that picture. Oh, that's so cute. Send that to me, text it to me. Yeah. So next thing you know, you know, that geo filter that you've created that, that's got your branding in it has now went from Snapchat to Instagram to Facebook through multiple different people. You know, from the person who's the youngest one in Gen C might have sent it with an older sister who's in a millennial who sent it to her mom who's a baby boomer. You know, so you're kind of hitting all three, you know, just with one kind of one very easy thing. And, and um, geo filters are super cheap. I mean, they, you know, especially if the festival is not very big. You know, I, I bet you I could cover my downtown festival probably for like 50 bucks a day. You know, so something like that's a lot of marketing for a little bit of money. You know, and the, the only other thing you got to do is make sure that people know it's there. So, you know, spread that word, you know, through social media, or if you can get signage out that says, hey, you were the official fil Snapchat filter of this event, you know, that would be really cool. Um, you know, and, and, you know, so those are probably my, my two that I would do would be a Facebook ad to let people know I'm in the community. And then if you can get that filter through some sort of event, and it doesn't have to be an event, it could be homecoming game you know it could be a rival football game any place that your market is and there's some sort of big thing happening that's when i would pull out those geo filters and really utilize those because those those are pretty powerful right now and they're, and they're still very popular you know the kid the kids i say kids i'm talking to teenagers they right. love those things still you know so and don't make it serious it's you know snapchat's not supposed to be serious it's a fun platform you know so don't feel like you got to be like all perfect with your with your geo filter it can be a little silly it can look a little clip arty and that's okay you know because that's just what it is you know it's hard for me as i love graphic design so it's hard for me to go oh, i'm putting like a really crappy clip art in here but <laughs> yeah, snapchat's supposed to be fun so that's awesome <laughs> that's great great so do you um have anything that you do on a daily basis or a success ritual something that you think contributes to your success with everything that you're involved with um I pray a lot. <laughs> I'm not kidding about that. <laughs> uh, you know, faith is a big part of who we are in our business and stuff like that. So, you know, to be honest, I, I do actually pray a lot. Um, you know, and I, and not just for our business, but I pray for the photographers that are attending our show, you know, and I've told people that I was like, you know what, you know, I don't think that that's a problem to pray for success, you know, especially if you're, you know, using your success in the, in the right way. Um, so I do that. You know, I, I pray for our own business and I pray for other people's business. And when it comes time for sync, I, you know, I say prayers. That everybody's going to get there safely and we're going to have a great show and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think faith is a big part of who we are. I do read. I'll share you with two books right now that I'm reading because um, that's always fun. I've got this one. It's called Struggles. Now, this one's uh, on social media. Oh, nice. Um, and it's um, it's faith-based but there's a lot in there that's not you know so don't feel like if you're not a believer you don't oh, I, i'm not going to read that book you know there's a lot of stuff in here that's perfect for you know if you're a believer or not a believer mm -hmm. um and it's a it's got a really a lot of really nice um social media tips in it not so much like marketing tips but more on how you should use social media to you know uplift your community you know that's a little bit more what this book's about or if you struggle with social media because so many so many people struggle with you know, that they didn't get likes or they didn't get shares. And it really yeah. becomes something that's kind of almost sad in a way because it kind of brings you down. So this book, Struggles, that's a really good one. Is that backwards or is that? No, no it's, it's, it's good. good. It's good. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then the, other one, the other one is Finish by John. Oh, yeah, ah, yeah, John. Yeah. Yeah. He's speaking at Sync. And I'm going to be honest, I have not finished the book. <laughs> and I'm close, but I, I got about almost, I got about three quarters of the way done and I stopped because I wanted his keynote at Sync to be like a surprise because I know he's going to talk about the book some, you know, so I didn't want to be like sitting in the audience going, no, well, that was in the book. That was, you know, so I stopped reading it. <laughs> I'm going to finish it when I get back. And then there's one more um, that I want to mention. It's also by John Acoff and it's called Do Over. Mm -hmm. And that one I read when I was going through my transition of leaving my full-time studio job and moving into full-time sync. Um, and that one's a really good book that if you're struggling with maybe where you are as a business owner, and maybe you're thinking, this is not for me, and I'm not sure if this is for me, and maybe I want to switch jobs. I'm not sure if I want to switch jobs. Mm -hmm. That book was really good because it gave some really great practical tips on how to kind of um, move through that transition. So that's another good, great book by John Acoff. And it's called Do Over. 
Um, you know, and it's just basically about a career change, a career do-over. So, you know, if you're kind of floating through that transitional period, um, I think that's a great read as well. It's super easy. He's very funny, easy to read. You know, all his books are like that. They're, I mean, you can probably breeze through his books if you sat down in, in probably two or three days and have it done. So, um, super easy to read and a funny guy too. So I like, yeah. I, like I like reading his books. That's yeah. awesome. Now, now I have more things to add to my reading list. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> He's an incredible speaker as well. I've been watching uh, on YouTube and other channels uh, for a long time, been watching his speeches and everything. Oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm super, actually follow him. Yeah. So I'm super okay. excited about opening night. I think he's gonna blow everybody's minds and oh, yeah. I think it's gonna be a really dynamic presentation. So that's oh, great, cool. excellent. <laughs> so is there a business tool or a resource um, that you use or have used that you can't live without? Business tool or resource? Um, I. My resource right now is following people that are not photographers on Instagram. That's great. Following other people. Um, I'm not going to say who I'm following because I don't want to give away my secrets. <laughs> 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 is that really bad? Is that really bad? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's really bad, but there's some people that I'm following right now, or there's some businesses that I'm following right now that I feel like are, well, and for my industry, it's a little bit different because, you know, I'm a part-time photographer, but I'm a full-time with the event planning. So I thought, okay. you know, to be honest, I'm following a lot of event planning places yeah. um, or different conferences or even some of the more um, larger churches, you know, because some of those larger churches, um, they, their Instagram is really cool because it's all built around community, which is a lot about what we do at Sync is we try to build our event around community. And so a lot of what those multi-campus churches are posting and doing with their like signage and their graphics, I, I kind of borrow from them. So, you know, I'm a strong believer, you know, I'm gonna go way back here about, I don't know, maybe I'm so my age, maybe about 10 years ago um, when there was another conference that was called SPA, Senior Portrait Artist. And they would always bring in an out of industry speaker. And I always loved that because I'm like, we get so like, focused on just photographer only you know yeah we gotta go listen to sue bryce we gotta listen to Lindsay Adler. we got you know all those top names that we all, that we kind of get these blinders on and i feel like that looking outside the industry to other companies and other business owners and you know trying to find somebody that's kind of similar to your what your market is and really learning from them and that's what we've been doing a lot lately of is just kind of paying attention to different markets besides photography and stealing those ideas or borrowing those ideas um, and kind of melding them into our own. Cause I mean, it's super easy. Uh, you know, if you see something you like, I mean, Instagram's got a great feature where you can save things and you can look at it later. It's just that little bookmark that's under the photo. And I just hit that bookmark and I've got a huge collection of things that I can go back to later for inspiration, whether that's signage or, or a text of some sort or a quote or a, a, a gra or an image, you know, anything, you know, that I can look at later. So, um, I'm, I'm just a strong believer of looking outside the industry and, and helping those resources grow your business as well. Yeah, I, they always, you know, success leaves clues. And, and, and it's something I think we always cringe. We're like, oh, we can't. And it's like, people have been doing rim lighting forever. So if you saw somebody, you know, two months ago that did a really cool rim lighting trick and you're like, I feel dirty if I duplicate or do something similar to this. It's like, well, they learned it from somebody and that somebody learned it from three other people. And oh, you know, it's like, so it's just, and definitely it's like a source of inspiration. And, and I, and I a hundred percent agree that most of our knowledge that, that we train and teach, actually we came from industries outside. Like I had eight real estate companies or offices and I, train tens of thousands of salespeople. So my in-person sales techniques and handling objections and positioning comes from a whole different perspective uh, of people that are in an industry that is way more aggressive in sales and, and very, very sharp in understanding human communication versus the artist struggle where we're like, oh, are we worth this? Should we charge it? I don't know that you're, you're okay going in the door, you know, commanding a commission that's gonna make you 20, 30, $40,000 you know, on something where you could sell a house in a matter of a day or two, right. you know, it, you know, so it's something that my reality was, was different. So I, it's something that it's, it's great to hear you say that too, because I think we need more people to be very open to say like, it's, it's not a dirty word to do research, you know, cause I think they say that if you, if you copy from one, like it's stealing, but if you, if you copy from many, it's R and D it's like, you know, it's, it's research and development you know? <laughs> you know, and it's like in every industry. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So last but not least, what are you working on now and how can people get in touch with you? 
All right. Well, as you guys know, because you're going to be there. Yes. <laughs> yes we are. Yeah. Yes. You guys are speaking. We're working. We're full on sync right now. Yes. Um, you know, and that doesn't stop because as soon as we're done, we start working on the next event. So, um, you know, full on sync. Um, you know, that's in coming up at the end of February, Mar uh, February the 23rd through the 26th. I'm in Destin, Florida. Uh, it's a three and a half day conference. Um, you know, so a couple of things that make it a little bit different than everybody else's. Number one, we don't have tracks. So you have, you can see everybody. So if it's on the main stage, you have it's your opportunity to see them. Now, whether you skip out and go down to the beach, that's your problem. <laughs> if you're there, you can't make any excuses because you're going to see every educator that's there on the main stage. Um, we have a really awesome trade show. I'm happy to say that we just sold it out. So there's 48 companies that are going to be in a trade show. Um, some of them are brand new to the photography industry, which is really exciting as well. Um, so we have that going on. And then, you know, I think what is the coolest thing about sync and Paul, you kind of talked about that a little bit earlier is the community that's there. Um, it has a really tight community. Now I don't want that to sound wrong because you know, don't feel like you're not going to fit in because I often post, I say it's the friendliest photographers on the planet. Like this is crazy to me. I going into it. I didn't plan that. That just kind of helped it happen on its own. And I'm so thankful that it did because you can get into a point where it becomes a, you know, a show becomes very clicky, you know, where people kind of always go with the people that they know. And thankfully, Sync's never been that. It's been a very opening community. Um, you know, people are welcome. And I hear people that say, it was my first time. I was just told, actually, um, in the hallway imaging, a guy came up to me and he goes, I went to my first Sync last year and I will never miss it again. Oh. You know, I thought that was a really cool testimonial because he felt so welcome and he, and he you know, connected with so many people. Yeah. You know, so that was really cool. Um, so anyway, it's in Florida, it's in Destin, and um, you know, who doesn't want that right about now as I look out my window and see six <laughs> inches of snow. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the second event that we do is Sync Sports, um, and that one is for volume photographers. Now, don't let that word, you know, scare you, <laughs> because, you know, we do, it is volume based, but we are, this year we're kind of spreading out our knowledge a little bit, where some of the educators are going to talk about um, you know, there's a missing market and there's, uh, that's like theater and band kids. Mm -hmm. And so we have somebody come in and talk about that particular market, which I think is going to be awesome. We got cheerleading, we got how to do banners. So even if you're not doing huge volume, but you want to kind of learn how to make the banners, how to shoot for them and how to create them, that'll be there. Um, you know, dance schools, you know, a lot of people get into dance schools. We're going to break into that a little bit as well. So that's coming up. That's June. Don't put me on the spot here. June 10 through 13. Um, mm -hmm. And that's in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And it's held at the largest indoor sports complex in the United States, which is called Spooky Nook. And it's really, I mean, it's one of those things you got to see to believe. It's incredible. So those two events are our main thing that we're doing right now. Um, we have some things that are coming down the pipeline that I think people will be excited about. Um, and you can just follow us on social media. Everything is at Sync Rocks. So that's on all platforms, which I didn't give that tip. Just make sure all those platforms are the same because it makes it easy for everybody. So at Sync Rocks on Instagram, social media, on Facebook. Um, those are my two big ones. I don't, I'm on Twitter, but honestly, it's just copy paste over to Twitter. It's not like it's, you know, we don't do anything different there. So Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Sync Rocks. Awesome. Great. Awesome. And also, uh, the, for them to know about the speakers and the schedule and everything for Sync, would they go to your website? Yeah, the website is syncrocks.com. Okay. Um, and it's pretty easy. There's a tab that says Sync 2018. That's going to be all ever. The menus that pop down under that are going to be about that show. There's a Sync uh, Sports tab. And then there's also one for Sync 2019. Doesn't have anything on it but the dates. But if you need to save the date, you can go check that out as well. So that way you know. And, um, and there's some nice, um, if you go in there, we have some blog posts or some nice videos and some different you know, blog things on there too. So if you want to go and, you know, spend a cold afternoon, you know, snuggled up on the couch reading some blog posts, there's some good things there too as well. So. Excellent. Great. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. This has been so much fun and so much information. Um, I know everyone's really going to appreciate that and looking at their social media differently and really diving in with some of the, the tips that you gave. So yeah, thank, thank you. We thank appreciate you. the time. We know you're busy, yes. especially with that bio you know, <laughs> this time of the year. So it is that time of year. Well, thanks you guys for having me. It's been an, a real pleasure and I really enjoy, you know, talking to you guys. I've always enjoyed your friendship and appreciate oh, that as well. Thank you. We, we do as well. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.